also want to talk about some of the stats and some of the sight sheets for the Paris Olympics this summer because some I I've brought up the sight sheets for the fifteen hundred freestyles for the men and women and they are fast. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with the men's hundred free. There yeah. are eighteen people seated under forty eight flat. Yeah. In Tokyo, semifinals was forty eight forty four. And in the final, it was 47-82. 47-82 would be seated 16th right now. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm wondering if you can talk about like some some people that you're excited to see swim and like what what your podium predictions look like as of right now. Uh, that's a good question. I haven't really thought too deeply about what the podium will look like um i guess one thing i think it's it, just like the statistics of it um i think i think the like semifinal time will be slower than what 16th is um and i think top eight will be slower than what the eighth seed is because it's just like i said statistics yeah. of their best time in the past 18 months so it's everybody's peak like literally lifetime best to get there um but yeah it is definitely going to be very fast um yeah, it's it's kind of cool that forty eight is like like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it's also crazy. Um, and now it's almost the expectation of somebody, hopefully multiple people, going forty six. I don't think there's ever been more than um, one forty six in a heat. At the I don't think time. we've ever seen forty six at the Olympics. I think yeah, Caleb Dressel's forty seven zero is the Olympic record. Yeah, because I don't know if we've ever seen because it's just pan. Um, Popovici and who, who else has gone forty six? But they've never they've never had two people go forty six in no. one heat. Might happen. It's been uh, those two and Dressel are the only one. Or Dressel's not entered in the hundred free. That's right. Yeah, he didn't make it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I I think the most dangerous person on this list is Chris Giuliano. Yeah. Because he spoke openly about like how he's still figuring out long course. Yeah. And he's still figuring out like certain aspects of his race, and I'm like, that's terrifying. If he's yeah. going 47-2 in the hundred free, and he's still figuring yeah. it out, th I think like he's got the most upside of any of the guys on this list. Oh yeah, that's what I. I mean, when I knew he was going to be really good this summer was their Sunday after ACCs when they did he did that hundred free and he was like 47-8 or something. It was like okay. He's ready. Yeah. <laughs> he's ready he, he went 47-4. Uh, oh, 47-4. Yeah. yeah. It was like, okay, yeah, that, that's when it's like, all right. He, knowing how those meets go, you're pretty exhausted Sunday. And then it's like, okay, also probably hasn't been doing that much focused long course stuff. So to just stand yeah. up and go 4 he's, he's, he's ready to go. Um, yeah, and he's, he's going to be good. I think Jack Alexi had a very impressive um, Worlds last year where it was like yeah. every time in a situation to, to step up, he did. So that's really exciting for, for the U S um, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how pan from China will do. Um, Cause like he, he's been he, like, not the most consistent at like across the meet yeah. where he'll have downs. And now it's Obviously, I think it diff it's a much different meet in general, but where every time he's going to have to be landed on the line. Um, so he can he's somebody who can he can be really fast. And I think technically he's really good. The way he swims it, it's really good. P David Popovici has been looking great. Um, he's one of my favorite. I, I'm a big Popovici fan. Just <laughs> like his like philosophy of, towards swimming is really cool. Um, and I just enjoy like listening to him talk. So I I, I, I hope hope he does well. Um, and yeah, just the depth of it is is going to be pretty pretty real. I think it would be a little faster than trials. I would guess probably forty seven seven, forty seven six to to make the A final. Um, and then it's just going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> <to make it. laughs> um, so yeah, I think I. I, I mean, that's how it is at, as I was at U.S. trials. It's, it's great that the U.S. guys have, have done that and gone through all three rounds where it's like, okay, round one, people are just, everybody's going. Then it's like, how do we be faster? And then how do we be even faster? Um, and I can't remember where this is in the, in the schedule, but they'll, they'll 
all all those guys will have swam the four by one most likely. It's twice. the second night of the meet, I think. Is yeah. the four by one for the men? No, but that's night. That's first thing. Yeah. Oh, it is. And, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's what's. I think that's oh, one of okay. the like. Yeah, I actually have the have the competition schedule right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, with like night one is going to be electric, where it ends with women's four by one free and then men's four by one free right after that. Like that's. I want to see crazy. that world record yeah. go down. Oh yeah, I think it's time. <laughs> I mean, it's just like swimflation has been been moving at that rate. Oh yeah. Now past super suit times. Um, I, I would be very surprised if they don't break that that world record. Honestly, at the um, very least, like get close to it. Oh yeah, the, I think the, I think the only other team that's gone three hundred eight was the U.S. in twenty twenty one. No one else has gone three hundred eight. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They did that, and even um, I re- in twenty twenty two as well when because uh, Ryan was on that. I think there were three hundred nine, like five or something. I gotta find out for you. Yeah, they were, they, they were, they were. It was a fast relay. Yeah, because I know Ryan. Ryan was forty six. Like yeah, they were three oh nine three. Yeah. It was Dressel yeah. forty seven six, Held forty six nine, Justin Rest forty seven four, and Brooks Curry forty seven two. Crazy yeah. that half of that relay will not be here, and they were that fast, and that there's still guys who went faster. Like yeah, yeah. That, that's why I think it'll be I think it'll be really good and it's uh, great for the U.S. to have such such good depth, um, and that's what's so cool about being on the U.S. team that it's like okay we have six guys who all six can be lights out and it's just like you got to earn your spot in the morning so they have motivation to to rip it in the morning and then be even better at night. Um, so yeah, I, I'm super excited for. That first night, like watching the women's four by one and then the men stand up and do it. It's going to be crazy. Uh, yeah, that's going to be really fun. I like I did a swim fact um, like a few months ago. And I've done like I've, uh, today is day 80, by the way, of that swim fact series I've been doing. As of recording this, it's day 80. And I'm losing my mind at the fact that I've done an edited, recorded, researched video every yeah. single day for the past two and a half months. Um <laughs> I don't know how I managed to keep it up through trials. Like, that was difficult in itself. But I did one about the men's 4x100 free relay and which teams I thought could break the record. Mm-hmm. And the, I, like, did some research as to the top splits ever and when they happened and who was on those relays. There was a period of time in, like, pre-2020 that I thought the U.S. could do it because we had four different guys go 47 on four different relays. Yeah. Um, but right now, I think only the U.S. and Great Britain have a shot. Because yeah. Great Britain's yeah. had four guys go 46 between Tokyo and now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what um, I I know last year, because Ryan was on that relay, I was, like, kind of nervous about the Great Great Britain's team because they were looking really good, but yeah. they DQ'd that relay in prelims. Um, so I doubt they'll make that mistake again, but they've got, um, some, some studs. They're going to be, they're going to be really good. Um, I looking at it and you've probably researched it more than me, but those are the two that I think are the certainly favorites. Not that there's others that can't, I mean, Italy always has, seems to get it. Get they've it together. like quietly put together some of the best relays in the world in Italy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, they're like always, they just have exactly <laughs> like four guys who were firing yeah. at the same time. Um, but yeah, and then besides that, obviously there's a lot of opportunities. Like the Australian team wasn't crazy deep at their trials in the 100. Um, I think it was like 48-7 was, that made it there. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're, they're a team that's always pretty good. If but. they can build a relay out, like around Kyle Chalmers, because I'm like, you've yeah. got a guy who drops 46 lows basically at will. If you can get three other guys in the 47 low range, that yeah. adds, that gets that re- that record right there. Yeah. But I think you're and right. It, it'll be Great Britain and U.S., I think. Yeah, and that's like when Duncan Scott at the end of a relay, when he went that 46-1, it's like, oh. all right, we can't. <laughs> You can't can't have him doing that again. <laughs> against us, that's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, 
I mean, the Great Britain looks fairly unbeatable at this point in the 4x200. My yeah. hot take about that 4x200 is that South Korea challenges for gold. Oh, that's yeah, my, that's yeah. That, yeah. Because they've, they've had the same four guys on that relay for the past four years, and they yeah. have consistently gone faster and faster. Yeah. So I, I, like, the swim nerd in me is really wants to see a country that typically doesn't challenge for relays get yeah. up there and win a medal, because it's just good for the sport to yeah, have stuff cool. like that happen. Yeah. Do you know it's a, um, a swim fact that you might like? The, the British team probably at least – Half of that, uh, half of that relay, all their mid mid D people have trained in Arizona for probably five months of this calendar year. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're always Wait. here. They go to Flagstaff. That's like two hours north of us. Boy, that's they're cool. All, they're like literally always there. Like, why are you guys here? <laughs> this doesn't. This is cool, but like this doesn't make sense. Um, that's but, so yeah. funny. Like just. It's not even like the closest to them. They have to fly across yeah. the whole U.S. to get there. Yeah, it's like not convenient at all. But they love <laughs> it up there. So <laughs> I'm I'm trying to think of like if there's a coach out there or if there's like it's it's just a great their their pool's really nice. They've had a lot of um, again. I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. It's cool. Yeah. It's close by, but it's Flagstaff is like the European training hub. They huh. all. Just go to flags, just because it's, it's... That's it's, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next event that I have written up here is the f Men's 50 Freestyle. And this is the one that was the most staggering to me. 39 people under 22 flat. In Tokyo, it yeah. took a 21.9 to make semifinal. It took 21.97. Mm -hmm. And finals was 21.78. But now there's almost... 40 people seated yeah under that time <laughs> i think i think what's what's an interesting like <clears throat> thing about that is it's because the fina a cut was 20 2201 um yeah if it was 22 it's it's just like trials where it's like oh man it got way faster nobody's going to be able to get it and then there's like six heats of one tenth under the trial cut like, yeah it's it's a cool testament to just like what's possible because when people are like okay I have to go at twenty one to make it like all these guys who are twenty two four twenty two five just like figure out how to get there but yeah it's definitely insanely deep um, I'm excited to watch just watch that in general but with uh, like Cam McAvoy I've gotten to know his his coach pretty well also and it's been super inspiring to see them go about it in a different way and that's i mean always i think a, a good exciting thing um and there's there's a ton of people to do there i think florent manadu has been looking really really good like we've been actually doing that in like a modified version of one of the things he does he does like 50s fast spins and paddles with 12 strokes We've been doing it with 20 strokes where our guys are getting like 22s, 21s with with like six kicks, 20 strokes. But he can use six kicks, 12 strokes, 20 points. It's like, how do you hold that much water? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he's going to be – he's going to be good. Um, he's – if he – I did a swim fact about him too. If, if my research was right, if he medals again this summer – it would be just him and Phelps who have medaled in an individual event four times in a row. Dang, that's cool. I, I think I, I think he's got a very good chance to do that. He's been looking really good. Um, I mean, he won a lifetime best in his hundred free at like thirty four. Yeah, like that's insane. <laughs> that's what their their four hundred medley relay can be can be yeah. pretty good. Um, and it's like they're they're like willing him to please swim the hundred yeah. because <laughs> like, they had drew say go 49-3 and in fly yeah. like yeah. if you have a guy going 49-3 and fly you just need three more average splits at best yeah but and they that's have a medal splits. they have yeah. like a 52 what, what he goes like 52 3 52 Dude, 5 yeah back. like yeah like um, 52 mid something like that and then marshawn 59-2 which he yeah. can probably go 58 he can go 58, yeah. And then it's like, okay, go 49. And then, like, Florent, you can do 100 yeah. for an Olympic gold medal. Like, <laughs> you, can, you can do this. Um, it would be the upset of, like, 
the 21st century if they unseated the U.S. for gold in that. Yeah, that would be that would be crazy. And doing it at home, they're 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 gonna go it would like it, that would be like a historic moment that would, for for yeah. France as a country would go crazy. <laughs> yeah, let me look at it on the schedule because I don't think it interferes with the. Or, oh yeah, it's ooh, yeah, it's, it's after the four, it's after the fifty. Florent can yeah. Florent. Oh yeah, last <laughs> event of the meet, just full yeah. send it. Like yeah. there are names on this list of fifty freestyle guys that like I've never heard of. Yeah, that's what who, I, I wonder what the Ukrainian guy will do. Um, oh, Bukov. Yeah, I I would imagine he spent the past six months exclusively training his start. Yeah, because <laughs> he's like point. He's like. I compared him to Gretchen Walsh in that he is so fast in the water, but is abysmal off the blocks, to say the least. Yeah. And he, he took a breath, and, and when he won Worlds, too, it was like, he just holds crazy yeah. water, like 32 strokes or something. It was like, it's it crazy. I mean, I, I got to highlight Chris. I'm, so I've been the biggest Chris Giuliano advocate this year. Yeah. Anytime people would ask me my predictions for trials, I tell them Hunter Freestyle, Alexi Giuliano, Dressel. Those are your top three. And people would be like, what do you mean Dressel's not going to make it in the 100 free? Like, of course he is. And I'm like, Alexi Giuliano, Dressel. And I got text messages the, the morning after that 100 free final of people oh, yeah. being like, oh my God, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> but like the fact that he also qualified in the 50. Like this guy, this guy is dangerous. It might not happen this Olympics, but he's dangerous in all three of these distances. Yeah. I mean, who else? Josh Leendo is crazy good. Ben yeah. Proud is still going twenty-one lows. Yeah, ben, I was going to say Ben Proud's another dark horse. He's been. Yeah. Um, he's always peak right when he needs to. He's like handles the pressure very well. Um, I think he would be the only one to ever win. Worlds, Commonwealth, short course worlds, and long course worlds. If he, or and and Olympics, I think so. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'd imagine. I think he'd be the only one for the men because I'd imagine Kaylee McEwen would. I, th I feel like she won the. Oh, Emma. Yeah, Emma McEwen. She probably. I don't think she won short course. Oh, I'm course, saying Kay Kaylee McEwen in the two back. I'd be oh, willing okay. to bet might have done it, but I think he might be the only guy. Yeah. Who's done it. Right. God, I mean, and then, like, um, way down on the site sheet in, like, 16th or 17th is Jordan Crooks. But he, in, so he, in 2022, had, like, a breakout short course season at Short Course Worlds. And then, yeah. and then seemed to kind of put it together for long course in 2023. He went, like, 47-7 and 21-6 in the 50 and the 100. He's, he's another guy who's, if he's figured it out more, he could challenge up there for a medal. Yeah. We could, yeah, he's he's good. We'll see. <laughs> we'll it's see going to be a fight just to even make just the be, final. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool that it's, it's also like, I think really cool how, um, how likely it is to have a swim off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was told about, I wish I was there for it because it probably was really funny to watch. After that swim off at trials, yeah. how you walked into the media zone and you're like, go warm down. I wish <laughs> yeah. I'd been there to see that. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it was like, well, they. it's funny because nobody really knew what was happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's like never happened before. So I like ran over to the... Um, like officials table and they were literally like looking at me like what like what, what do we do <laughs> <laughs> and i was like let's do it again like let's send them over there do it again they were like well um because they first there it was like pretty late and they're like we can it the rule is it has to be 45 minutes maximum after the race finishes that we do this again and they were like let's push it as far back as we can to like 10 15 and it was like, no, let's just do it at, I can't, it was like 20 minutes after. Yeah, because if like, like both parties agree to it, then like. Yeah, it's like, there's still going to be people here. If we wait until super late at night and it's just us, that's not going to be any fun. Um, and then it was like, okay, it's in 20 minutes. And they were like, literally Adam and uh, Johnny were like standing over there. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I need to tell them. <laughs> okay, guys, start getting ready. Um, 
And yeah, that was, that was crazy. That's one of the most fun meet experiences I've ever had. Um, just cause how nuts everybody went. And then, um, like the one thing that I think they missed a little bit was like, they didn't even, I don't think the announcer knew what was happening. <laughs> so it was just like silence, but it kind of ended up being cool, cooler. Cause it was like, okay, I told them. And then people were just like, everybody, every person I walked by, they're like, when's it happening? And I was telling them like, okay, 950, <laughs> you just see it like spread. And then like 945, you see this wave of people like going back to the stand. <laughs> so it, was, it was actually like super cool. And then they were, I took a video of it because it was uh, like all the lights were off, but the light show was going and they were playing Metallica super loud. And it was like, okay, these guys are the most fired up they have ever been. Um, if, if you want, send me that video and I'll, I'll edit it into oh, the yeah. edit. At a, and that's a, that's awesome. I mean, like I was, I was in the media zone before the, the swim off happened, and yeah. I was like talking with somebody and like just like not even like interviewing somebody, just like talking with one of the other media people, and all of a sudden we just hear screaming, and we're like, oh my god, what happened? We look up and we see twenty one seventy nine, twenty one seventy nine, yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna do it again, yeah, because that was crazy. For it, it was also nuts that like just for us asu in the men's 50 at olympic trials we had three swim offs <laughs> we, we had in the morning we had a swim off for first alternate and then came back at night swim off for eight <laughs> which is a tie and then swim off again it's like we're getting our money's worth on this yeah this so uh, you're getting yeah. your money's worth on those entries yeah <laughs> yeah it was it was, it was it was super fun but yeah they did it like that was crazy i mean i like when I looked at, um, sorry, not when I looked at, when I saw, like, the women's 100 freestyle, there's so many swim-offs, like, the whole meet, yeah. like, the women's 100 freestyle, Erica Connolly yeah. having to swim five times to make the Olympic team, Yeah, like, that's like, insane. Okay, she earned it. <laughs> yeah. But then when I looked at when has that happened before, where there was a tie in a swim-off, the only other time that I could find it was at 2018 Big 12s in the 50 free again? Oh, there yeah. was a swim off to make it into the A final or the B final. Yeah, thanks. I, I, but as far as I know, that's the only other time, at least in recent history, that that's happened. Yeah, I remember at the at the at the at the 2001 Core Classic when I was 10, these two kids had tied in the 50 fly, but they just flipped the coin. To, <laughs> <laughs> they just I mean, swim off and tied again. <laughs> at Worlds like, this year, there was a tie in the 800 free. Yeah. And they just decided to let them both swim. I know. That's what, uh, it's been crazy how many swim-offs, like, we've had in the past bit. Because Ryan Held, last Worlds, um, tied Bukov yeah. in, in the 50. And it's like, um, which I feel like Ryan needs some credit to um, that guy's world championship. Because it was like, <laughs> next to Ryan, who's, Ryan's got one of the best starts ever and just like, destroyed him and then this guy almost came back and it's like what's happening ryan um but his start looked better the next, <laughs> the next <laughs> um so maybe now it's going to be even even better so yeah he's making progress so the, the last two events i've got for you are the are the men's and women's 50 and 100 free uh, i'm going to start with the women's 50 free because this was another s statistic that kind of blew me away because like We've heard about, we've seen swim inflation. We've been hearing oh, yeah. about it and we've seen the results of it. But I feel like this is the first time at an Olympic level that it's really taken hold oh, because yeah. there are 24 seated under 25 flat. Yeah. In Tokyo, semifinals was 2482 and finals was 243. Eighth place right now is 242. Yeah. Like, so I mean, I mean, I've, it's hard to bet against Sarah Schoestrom. Like, when Sarah Schoestrom is injured and out of the water and still can win an Olympic silver medal in this event, it's hard to bet against somebody who's been at the top of her game for 18 years. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she's she's good. She's always good. She's so consistent. Um, it's pretty incredible. Like, yeah, just how, like, I mean, she's been, yeah, how many times? Under 24? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, 
The yes, only we'll person who I think can have a shot at challenging her, and you'll you'll like this name that I'm about to bring up. You you know who I'm gonna say. Yeah. I think Simone has a shot only because somehow she just can get it done on like yeah. the eleventh hour, and the final chance she can just get it done. I'm oh, like, yeah. so if anybody's gonna beat Sarah Schoistrom, I think it's Simone Manuel. But she'd yeah. ha I mean she'd have to go like a huge best time to do it. But, like, I just, that's the only person who I think could reasonably, like, upset for gold here. Yeah, I I mean, obviously, I think she can. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, she she's she's super impressive. She can knows how to handle herself under under anything. And it's almost like pressure makes her better. Um so there's there's very few people who have that, and then there's very few people who also have where it's just like, how did you touch the wall before? Like, that <laughs> that, that fifty free that? final at trials, like yeah. I I think the entire stadium was collectively in shock. Yeah, yeah, and she's she's really good at that. So it's gonna be it's gonna be super super fun. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm super excited for that race because obviously. Um, Simone and then Taylor Ruck, who you trained yeah. as well. Doing, doing she's good. she's seated. I think she's not far down on the side sheet. She, she's yeah, tenth she's or eleventh on the, the side sheet. Yeah, like seated to be yeah twenty four five in my final. Yeah, but it, it's but she's yeah. also been steadily improving and steadily like because she it seems like she had a, like a rough couple of years and then has been like step like the yeah. upswing is happening now. Yeah, yeah, she's she's been looking really good. She's been in a great spot and been like enjoying swimming, which it's crazy that we forget that that's a big part of it. <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot easier to forget when you're older and doing it almost as a job. But yeah, once once she starts started really enjoying it and having fun, um, it's, it's she's been doing better and better. And I think that's like yeah, like there's one thing that people watching to take out of it. Like that's literally something you have to actively try all the time. And especially when you're at this high level um, where there's these pressures and that. And I think if you can escape that by realizing like, okay, this is, this is play, this is fun. Well, then you're going to be a lot more successful than if you're just trying to grind your way into it. Cause then it's something like this where we're talking about it and like, okay, this is going to be fun. It's like this where it's, some people are just freaking <laughs> freaking out <laughs> thinking about all these people who who could beat me who could take something from me but it's if you change that and like okay this is like it's going to be fun that's what it's supposed to be um so yeah i'm excited to see that but that's going to be a really good race because it's that's something that really is like very up for grabs like i remember mm -hmm. the, the first time i was really like almost shocked at who won was uh, at least in the 50 was i remember when florent manity won in 2012 i was yeah. like, unbelievable like who like him like laura laura's little brother that guy uh, <laughs> yeah, that's so literally now, what everybody thought of him as was like oh yeah. he's laura manadu's little brother <laughs> yeah yeah and like he won um and he had a pretty good celebration there when he like yeah. held out his tongue ring <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, you know, talking about like that, like having fun with the sport and enjoying yourself. I like in the press conferences, which Caleb Dressel was probably the best press conference person that we had. Um, it just in terms of like what he spoke about and how eloquent he was in everything that he said and how open he was about things. But there was a statement that he said that kind of broke my heart a little bit. Yeah. Cause he, he was asked like, what would it take for you to get back to the point where there is as little pressure as possible in your swimming and where it was the most fun for you? Like, what was the most fun period of time for you? And he said that he'd love to get back to swimming when he was five years old. When there was no pressure and you're just having fun and, like, you're dropping boatloads of time every time you get in the pool. And it kind of broke my heart a little bit that we have, like, placed that not we as in me and you, but, like, collectively yeah. that pressure has been placed on athletes of, like, if you don't perform at your peak level every single time you get in the water, then then why are you even here? Like, I feel like yeah. in the U.S. especially, there's that mentality of gold or nothing and not, I hope this person is able to have a positive and rewarding experience and to grow yeah. from this experience. 
Yeah, that's where I, I guess my take on that is that it's up to the individual because it's like yeah. all of that is in here. None of that pressure is real. It's all our perception of it. So it's, and there, there is, it, and it changes to where there's, when you're at a level like that, where there's like financial, um, it's connected to that, but it's still, I think you can turn it into, um, in, in, into, into a game and into, into fun. And that's something that I think Tressel, at least from the outside, it, it looks like somebody who does that to where he's like smiling when he does yeah. it. He seems like he actually like likes racing. Um, and yeah, I hope a lot of people can, and that's something I don't know really how to teach that besides just constantly saying, I mean, something we try and do here. Um, but I think if that's something we collectively did as a sport, it would be, it would be a really good thing where there's like, okay, this competition's coming up, but we're all excited for it. Uh, I, like Olympic trials was definitely the biggest example of that, where in the warm up pool, you could feel just the stress <laughs> that everybody was was feeling and like okay everybody like almost every person except for 52 of the 1200 entries were gutted after the race because they didn't they didn't make an olympic team yeah. a lot of them were like okay their olympic dreams are now officially over um which is which obviously is is hard and it's great that we have this society that um, encourages that. And it really is like anybody can do it. If you work hard enough, anybody can do it. But at the same time, it's not like um, a horrible disappointment if you don't do it. Like it was, I had got a great example because I was at Canadian trials like four weeks before and they were, they were like the opposite where it was like, <laughs> even in heats where like three people would make the A cut, they would be like hugging, like you're going to the Olympics, <laughs> man, it's amazing. Um, and like everybody was so happy the last day they did this thing where they walked everyone out, like the whole Olympics. And it was like, cool. Cause I got to be a part of it. Cause like the personal yeah. coaches got to walk out too. And we waited in the warm up pool for like two hours. So I was like, Oh my gosh, it's like 11 PM. Nobody is going to be here. <laughs> and we walked out a hundred percent of the people in the, in the crowd stayed. It was like kind of amazing. Um, so I, I think there's a, there's a, there's value in both. Cause I think there is value in that. Like, okay, we got to we got to do this. We've been dreaming our whole lives of getting this done and now's our chance. But then also like being able to almost turn it on and off is the the ideal way of doing it because we can be be a little bit like like the Canadians where it's just everybody like super excited. And yeah, there were some people who were who were bummed that they didn't make it, but it was not it definitely wasn't the level of like that the warm up yeah. trial. <laughs> I mean like Dressel in that same press conference Highlighted like he he did sort of did a little bit of that where he highlighted some of the guys who had beaten him. Like mm -hmm. he he said like I'm bummed that I didn't make the individual hundred free spot. I wanted it. It was a goal of mine and I didn't do it. But Chris Giuliano and Jack Alexi are fantastic and they will represent the U.S. really well. And they'll yeah. be like and they had, they earned that spot. But um, the flip side of that was the goofiest person that I met at trials was probably Zach Harding. Like, oh, yeah. he, he seemed like he was having the most fun of anybody in that stadium. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I think we need to take some lessons from Canadian trials, and we need to take some lessons from Zach Harding and just enjoying the journey and not oh, yeah. getting so wrapped up in the times and the finishes and just having fun with what you're doing. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Since Zach used to drink out of the... He used to bring a... Like gas tank, like gas tank. <laughs> he's been like that his whole career. He's oh my, he gave like I'll will send you the video, but he um he gave like a whole thing about peeing in the pool. Oh yeah, and how he doesn't consider himself to have swam in a pool unless he's peed in it. See, I've been trying to spread this message after the USA campaign was like literally the reason why it's difficult to breathe in pools is because you're all just peeing in it and I've like explained that and like explained it to the kids on my team and they're like yeah we're gonna keep peeing in pools. <laughs> like, come on guys this is disgusting all right so my last event because I, I i've kept you for longer than i than i intended to i apologize for that yeah. um my last event i want to talk about you with is the women's 100 freestyle. This was the only event where the top 16 
will probably fall around the same time as Tokyo. Because top yeah. 16 is 53-9, semifinals in Tokyo was 53-8, and finals was 53-1. The biggest yeah. surprise on this list for me was Sarah Schoistrom swimming it, because I feel oh, like yeah. that put everybody on notice of like, yeah. oh god, yeah. this just got way harder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think she can be she can be pretty fast. I think she's been focused more on the fifty, but I know at uh, Worlds like twenty twenty four Worlds, the one that just happened, um, she was she did she did butterfly on that and had a very good hundred fly split because yeah. uh, I know because Taylor was swimming free next to the Swedish team, and I was like, I hope I hope Sarah Sostrom doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, she dove in and went like fifty seven. Um, or 56, I think like she was, she was, she looked good for the whole hundred. Yeah. Um, and she went 52, two in this hundred. Like what is this? What is this entry time from like just last year? Yeah. Which is crazy that she's still going that fast. Yeah. She's somebody you can't ever count out of. Anything. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we're in LA 2028 and she's still dropping like 23 in the 50, like it's nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. She could do that. She could just keep <laughs> keep ripping fifty. She's She'll just keep line. going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, other than that, like, there's Merritt Steenbergen has been really good on this list. She's been fifty-two two. Shaban Hahi is somebody who I'd really love to finally see break through and go yeah, fifty-one I, I, and win an Olympic gold. Yeah, she's somebody who I wouldn't 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 bet against for any. Like, she's just been lights out every yeah. single meet like her 200 i think is going to be really good i think her 100 is is i i feel like that's her best race but she's been lighted up in the 200 um and then she went like 105 and 100 breast that one time which is like yeah. <laughs> she won a medal at worlds in the 100 breast like that's crazy yeah, yeah so, i'm gonna laugh so hard if she swims it at this meet and gets into that yeah. final it'd yeah. be so awesome <laughs> yeah Herbie, thank you so much for sitting down with me. It's always fun to get to talk to you. I'm really glad we were able to get this set up. I'm, yeah. I, like, I'm, I hope you're doing well. I'm, yeah, I'm doing great. You too. It's, yeah, always fun to, always fun to chat, like, what, what you're doing to keep it up. Yeah, thank you.